Good evening, everyone. My name is Tania Kuntz, and I am coming to you from the Tennessee Gemma Project with a short demo video to show you how a new um, pilot tool from Family Search works for indexing information from their online image collections. I am going to keep this short, but I thought it would be helpful to have this video because we have a blog post that I'm about to post now that will show you how this tool works. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen as I talk a little bit about what this tool is. Um, we've been pretty fortunate here in the Tennessee Gym Web Project to be able to get a sneak peek at this tool. So I'm pretty excited by it. It's called the Family Search Indexing Pilot Tool, and it is available as an extension for the Chrome browser. So when the video is posted online, I'm going to have in the description a link to the blog post so that you know how to get to the Chrome extension. It's called Family Search Pilot. And if you've not installed a extension, an extension to your Chrome browser before, once you bring up the page, there will be a green button that will say add. The now I've already added it to my Chrome browser, so I'm kind of, you know, I have a shortcut already but this is what the screen will look like for you. If you've never installed a Chrome extension before, you can Google it to get the instructions and then pick up from there. So once you have added this pilot tool, there will be an icon that displays for you in the top corner of your browser. It's a green um, background icon with a family search logo. And so if you can track my mouse movement, I'm pointing to it on your screen, but it's in the top right corner. Now, how do you get started with this? Well, again, the purpose of the tool is to allow you to index records from Family Search's image collections. These are images that are posted online so you can browse through them, but they've not been indexed yet. So I've already brought up a page for Tennessee. This is the list of records that Family Search has for the state of Tennessee. And when you go to the page, the top half of the page shows you their index collections. But if you scroll down, you will get a list of their image only records. And again, these not these have not been indexed. And so the name the images are there, but they're not searchable by the names that's with Thin the indexes. You know that Family Search has a huge effort around recruiting volunteers to help index their materials because that's how the data becomes so valuable to us as we do our family history research. But right now, if you want to index their collections, you have to wait for them to make that available as an indexing project. With this tool, you no longer have to wait. You can just go directly to the images and start indexing. So, given that we're Tennessee here in Tengen Web, I am going to show you an example using a collection of records from White County. So I've already loaded up a marriage certificate from this collection. And this is a marriage license between Robert Mitchell Bowles and Norma Sue Fowler. And they were married in 1961. Now, due to the way the Google Hangout screen works, I'm not going to be able to show you um, as I type in their information. But what I will do is show you what the Family Search Pilot Tool interface looks like. But this is the type of information that you'll be collecting after you do a brief configuration process to set up the tool for your first time using it. There's a field to type in the given name of the um, individuals. And so you can't see me, but I'm typing in the name of Robert Mitchell Bowles, saying that he's a male and that we have a marriage event that's occurred the eighth day of April in 1961. And the place um, of the marriage is in White County. So I'm just gonna put White, Tennessee. And he was 23 years old at the time. Then there's a section for relatives and that's gonna where I'm gonna be putting his wife's name, Norma Sue Fowler. And I can't put an age for her. I can just put the name, even though the age is in the record. There's a note section. So I could, for example, put that Norma was age 21 at the time of marriage. Again, you can't see me typing it, but I'm going to show you my screen here shortly. Underneath the notes section, there is a field for the URL of the record I'm indexing. And so you just want to make sure that the URL matches. So at this point, I'm going to switch what I am sharing my on my screen so that you can see the family search record. So let me quickly switch over to the pilot tool and share that with you. And hopefully this is going to work correctly, but you should be able to see at this point, the family search pilot tool window. Because of the way Google Hangouts work, again, I can't show you my whole screen, but as you're indexing, this family search window 
will pop up and be positioned side by side to your indexing window. So you'll have your image that you're indexing on the left side of the screen and this family search window on the right side of the screen. So what you'll see here is that I've typed in the given name of the principal person, Robert Mitchell Bowles. He's a male. I've chosen that from my drop down list. And then um, I have the marriage date of April 8th, 1961, using the format that Family Search prefers. Um, and if you mouse, if you hover over that particular field, it tells you what the format should be. So hovering over it, I can see that it's supposed to be a certain date. Now you can't see that in the video, but you'll see it as you actually use this tool. Same thing for location. Um, I've put in White Tennessee following Family Search's standards, and you get some prompts again when you ho hover over. And he was 23. The next section is for relatives, and so you see the wife here is Norma Sue Fowler, as I've typed it in. And if I click on the little plus sign. I can add additional fields for additional relatives. So if you were indexing an obituary, for example, that lists multiple people, you'll have the benefit of being able to choose that. And then there's a drop down menu that tells you the relationship and you can't see all the options as I do this Google Hangouts video, but as you're using the tool, you have probably 25 options here to indicate the type of relationship this person has to your principal person, or you can even indicate a non-relative if it's just another name mentioned in the record. Here we have our notes and we have the URL that you'll want to make sure matches the URL of the record you're indexing. So in this case, since I only have one relative to enter, I can hit the minus sign to collapse and get rid of those empty fields. But I wanted to show you how you add more fields if you have more names. And then at this point, I can hit submit. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen is telling me I have eight submissions to date. So the tool is actually keeping track of how many submissions I've offered. And then I hit submit. And you probably can't see this on the screen either. Maybe you can. But when I go to hit submit, I'm getting a pop-up box that says, please make sure the URL here in this bottom box matches the URL of the record you're indexing. That's important because as you enter the information, Family Search is able to know if that information has already been indexed. And then I have my nice message that says, upload is successful. Now, one of the first things that occurred to me as I was doing this is how would Family Search know um, that I'm not duplicating the work of someone else? Well, if you've noticed, my screen has now changed to say, notice there's one existing entry found in the database. So now if someone comes behind me and is indexing the same collection, they'll get a notice if that record's already been indexed. I think this is fabulous. And one of the other great things about this pilot tool is not only will you be able to index the image collections at Family Search, but if a website goes into partnership with Family Search, information from that website can also be indexed, added to the Family Search database so it can be searched there with a link to the original source. So for example, with the Tennessee Gym Web Project, if I post a collection of obituaries that I contribute to the project, that information could be indexed, included in the Family Surges Index, so it can be accessed and discovered there, and then link individuals who are using it to the Tennessee Gym Web website. That's great for Family Search. It's great for the Tennessee Gym Web Project, as it helps make more information available for use. So again, I just wanted to show you a brief demonstration. I'm going to now end this brief demo, but again, look for the link in the description below for how to get to the blog post that gives you more information about how to get to this pilot tool. Play around with it. I am sure Family Search would greatly appreciate the feedback while it's in beta mode um, until they get it prepared for official launch. So just keep in mind though, as a beta project, the information you enter does not get added to Family Search just yet. It goes into a dummy database. But once this tool is launched, any information you index will go to the Family Search database. So thank you for taking the time to listen. Good night.